Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mike. So today we're going to do a standard crevasse rescue. It's been updated from my previous video, which I've done a few years ago. So we're going to get started now. Um, so step one, just to set up this scenario, you're walking with clients. They want to go peek over the edge of the crevasse, as clients often do. They trip and they fall into the crevasse. Now with this crevasse, this, uh, this crevasse I know on the right side is a death crevasse. This is a huge hole. Um, but if we'll just say this is an average scenario, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to potentially approach the edge. Now this is an important part. For here, as I approach the edge, I'm checking to see if I'm putting myself in danger as I go closer. Because if I feel like I'm putting myself in danger, then I'm just going to put in a screw, I'm going to go assess the edge. Or I'm going to go to the end where the crevasse closes and assess from there. So I'm going to go over, be very careful, you can have an ice axe in your hand if you want, but walk over to the edge. And I just made visual contact there and I know that the client has taken a dump over the edge. They need help. They're not going to get up that vertical wall. And as I said, just keep in mind when you're approaching the edge, those things we talked about. So the anchor has to go down. So I'm over here with the anchor now. Now what I've already done is I've taken the ice axe and I've cleared away some ice, which is very important. You want to get down to the good ice. Now in the summer, you have this summer crust on top, which we've chipped away. You can see all the summer crust here. I have two screws, 21 centimeter screws. They're about as screw length and some apart as you can see here. And they're put in perpendicular to the surface, straight up and down, meaning not at any angle, straight up and down. Okay, I'm not forcing the turn either. They stop turning, I just turn it back and I'm content. Now, I have a locker and a non-locker, okay? So when you put the locker and non-locker on, one thing you wanna consider is the side you put the locker on is the side of your personal safety. So the locker, non-locker are both in. I have a 120 Dyneema sling here. Now I put that 120 sling on. Um, the next step I'm gonna do before I do anything else at this point, I'm gonna make my edge safety, my personal anchor. So, to do that, I'm going to take one end of the rope. I'm going to tie a figure eight on a bite here. And those of you who have watched my previous videos, you know what I say every time. Clean knot every time, baby. Almost every time. Um, so I'm going to take this now. I'm going to throw it to the edge. Just take some coils in your hand. All right, so that's a little bit too far. Pull it back. Now, I'm going to put it on this um, this locker right here. I can just make a clove hitch for that. Just do a simple clove. Now I'm going to actually put it behind the sling. So I'm going to make a clove hitch. Okay. Now I'm going to take this, put a locking carabiner on it, on my belay loop. Just give it a check. Okay, feel good about it. I'm going to go to the edge and just check, make sure it's the right length. All right, so I feel good about this length here. So this is a good length for me for my personal anchor. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take the other end of the rope, which is under here. So I'm going to put a figure eight on a bite as well here. Just like that, you know what they say clean out every time, baby. Okay. So there are a few knots you can use here at the focal point. For example, you can do a overhand, um, you can do a figure eight and you could do a clove. But for the purposes of, of learning, I recommend doing um, an overhand or a figure eight, but I'll do an overhand. And I use a carabiner when I start. I put the carabiner in, I just grab some slack here, bring it around, Put the carabiner through. And that right there is my focal point. Now, if you noticed, when I was pulling it, I had a general idea of the direction that I'm going to be wrapping off of, right? So that's the fall line there. Um, I had an idea where it was. So therefore, I made the fall line where I'm pulling the anchor to towards that direction. So be conscious that you don't, you don't want to pull over here and make the knot over there if you're repelling in this area or rescuing in this area. Now what this gives me is this gives me a focal point and it also gives me a shelf to use. I'm going to put this onto the focal point. 
I'm going to go to the edge. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to lower slack down. And you see Hoika doing some climbing there. I'm going to lower the slack down until I get about one meter past him. That looks good right there. Okay, so I'm going to bring the slack back up now. So I'm going to take a figure eight now on a bite. I'm going to put this in the shelf now. So now we're going to set up our appelling system. And for this, we're going to use an ATC and we're going to use a Prusik on top. So we're going to talk about that now. Just to review my setup quickly before we continue, I have my personal safety attached to the screw up here. And the first line down was on the focal, which you can see right here. The second, the loop went down, came back up, and it's on the, uh, the shelf here. Right? My carabine on myself is click checked. Okay, so I'm going to repel off of the shelf. Okay, so I'm going to set up my system on the shelf. Now for this, we're going to use an ATC. And this ATC has two modes. We have a high friction mode here with the teeth and a low friction mode. Also has, uh, you can put the carabiner in here to have guide mode, which we'll talk about later. Uh, but we're going to put high friction mode. So I'm going to take a bite, put it in, and put it on myself. And now you can see, um, this is how it looks at this point. My hand is coming where the hand would be on the ATC in high friction mode. I'm going to put a prusik on the line. And this is basically going to be a waste prusik. Now, how do we do this? How do we make prusiks? OK, so to do this, first, we have this is a 7 millimeter cordlet, 5 meters, which I recommend the 7 millimeter because our ropes are 9. And you want to be within about 2, meter, two millimeters um, of thickness. So this is 7, this is 9, which is good. So it bites well. If you have a 5 millimeter, then it, it may be a little hard to move. Or if you have an eight millimeter corlet and a nine millimeter rope, it may not grip well. So I go with seven and a five meter length of seven I carry two um, for the purpose of this rescue. I'm gonna take this now, I'm just gonna uncoil some. I'm not gonna drop the whole bundle. I'm actually gonna take my time and wrap it around. As you can see, there's one, there's two, and there's three. Okay, now I can drop the bundle after I do three. Now the steps of making a prusik we have wrap, which we just did. We have groom, which I'm doing now, meaning I'm trying to make sure it looks nice. Nothing is crossed. Everything's where it's supposed to be. I take it in my, my palm and I twist it to make it nice and tight, okay, as we can see right there. And now the next thing we're going to do is a don't forget me knot. Why? I don't know. You just don't forget the knot. <laughs> no, I do know. We're actually going to make a three to one mechanical advantage system using this don't forget me knot. So you want to make that pretty close as well. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is take one end of the rope and we're going to go through our tie-in points. So our tie-in points, we have a belay loop here and we have two tie-in points. And harnesses differ, but mostly you'll have tie-in points and you should know where they are on your harness. Well, you'll always have tie-in points, so you should know where they are. I'm going to put them from the chest down. Okay, I'm not going to go from down, I'm going to go from the chest down. And that allows you to tie the knot in front of you. Okay. All right, now, and now I also have, I'm grabbing the other one. I'm just measuring. Now, how I measure is I just put it to my face here, and I don't want it to be like this, and I don't want it also to be above my head. I want it to be just about uh, maybe my forehead height. That's a good height to have it. I'm going to tie the knot right here. Just an overhand works fine. Okay, so that's good. Now with this, you can put the slack in your pocket. That's the easiest probably way to do it starting out. Just pop it in your pocket. Okay, so let's look at the system again. So what I have right now, I have my ATC high friction mode. I checked it again. The climber is going up toward the anchor. The hand is going where my hand would be on the high friction mode here. Um, it's through both loops, through the metal hoop here and also through the rope, which is important. Carabiner is locked. I'm using a steel carabiner for wear because, of course, the more your rope's rubbing on a carabiner, 
the more the carabiner gets destroyed, especially in the summer with a lot of ash, as you see now. So I have a steel carabiner. Just gonna go up and check my anchors. Again, click, 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 non-locker, works well. Okay, so, so now, and I could also do a bounce check as well, just to check, make sure that Prusik's locking. I could tighten up, make sure the ATC is biting as well. I feel good with everything here on the system. So as I approach the edge, I can also remove this personal safety here. Okay, and I tend to leave this right on the edge so I remember when I come up, it's right there. Right on the edge. Now when you're going down, the step we're gonna do is, we're gonna have to hold this and also we're going to be letting, controlling the brake strand. So you're never letting go of the brake strand. So basically both hands are always occupied. We'll learn in a different video how to repel in a different way, but this is for this rescue, we keep the prusik above because it's very easy to ascend with. That's what we'll be teaching. So I'm going to go down, go to mine both. Now, if you happen to get in a point where you accidentally let go of the prusik and it locks, it's fairly hard to get undone if you're uh, not finished your repel yet. So just make sure that you're keeping the prusik close to you as you go over the edge. So off I go. And I'm going to make sure also when I'm coming, I'm just going to be careful of kicking ice over onto my victim, as you can see covering his face here. I'm going to stop just above the victim here so I can work well. What I'm going to do immediately is just put a catastrophe knot, which you can just do as an overhand, let's say right here, simple overhand. And you don't have to clip this into yourself. Why? Because your ATC is still on and engaged. So if you were to slide down, you would stop right here. Okay. We'll learn about what we're going to do in a moment with that. Okay, so now I feel good about this setup. I'm going to go and assess the client, make sure ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation. So he feels good on that. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to attach him to the rope. We can use just a carabiner, meaning a triple locking carabiner, or we can use something like a pulley. We're going to use a pulley in this example, but the carabiner is basically the same process. You want to make sure you're as, as efficient as possible because the six to one has a lot of edge friction, the ATC is very high friction. The carabiner is also high friction. So it's actually not a six to one. Um, it's more like a two to one, but we're gonna use a pulley to in increase efficiency. How we're gonna do this now is I'm gonna put, I'm gonna take the rope here. I'm gonna put the pulley on the rope like so, as you can see. And I'm gonna put the carabiner on the pulley. I'm gonna put the carabiner on the belay loop I have to now put a slip hitch here because if I don't put a slip hitch and something were to happen then he were to keep sliding and sliding and sliding, um, which would make, make the, our situation more difficult if he slides down to something more dangerous and happens to get injured. Okay, so for the slip hitch, I'm gonna pull up here. Now, as I pull up, notice that I'm reaching across with my, my right hand is on my left side and I'm bringing the rope over both strands. Now we can see this over both strands and putting it through. Okay, one more time so you can see again. I'm reaching over with my right hand, taking it, pulling up, pulling up more, bringing the rope over both strands and through that loop right there. Okay, now if he were to sit down, let's just give it a test and see. Now if he were to sit down on it, so, so you can see that he were to be secure, he's not gonna fall down at all which is what I'm really most focused on. And also what happens when I pull this rope here is this would pop and then it would be able to continue and travel up the rope. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do here, now we go back to ourselves and the client's just waiting there hanging out. We're going to put the foot prusik on the line. And same process for this. I'm going to take the bundle without dropping it. I'm going to wrap it around. Once, twice, three times, drop the bundle. And for this, we don't need a don't forget me knot. We can forget the don't forget me knot on this one because we have it here, okay? Now remember the three steps of making a prusik, we wrapped it, we're gonna groom it and we're gonna set it, right? So grooming it here, setting it just means making sure that it's not moving. Now what's very important when you make this prusik here that you don't have it right against the top prusik, the waist prusik. Because worst case scenario, if your hand's up here 
and you pull down, you're going to unlock this waist prussic and it's going to hit the foot prussic and it's going to unlock the foot prussic and then you're going to slide down. Um, we're going to do something called a catastrophe knot as a clove hitch to prevent that and we'll learn later why that's going to be prevented and how it's going to work. But just so you know, you want about a fist apart roughly from the top waist prussic to the foot prussic. So the same process for this as we did before tying in the prussic. I'm going to take one end of the prussic here. I'm going to put it through my tie-in points right there. It's a little chilly, huh? A little bit. A little nippy. And now I'm going to tie the knot here. Um, what I can do is I can lower it a tiny bit because I'm going to add some slack into the system. And then with this, then I could pull it back up and it's still separate. Okay, and now we have an overhand knot. Just to look at the system again, we have the first waist pressing going down tie-in points, the second foot pressing going down to tie-in points. I have a catastrophe knot here, and then I also have the ATC, which is still engaged. Now I have two points of contact on the rope um, that are independently attached to my tie-in point, so I feel good right now about taking off this ATC. So I'm going to remove the ATC. We're going to put a clove hitch here. And now you could just take out the catastrophe knot here. Okay, now this is my ascending setup. The last thing I have to do, I'm gonna take this foot prussic and I'm gonna make a foot loop. So to make a foot loop, what I'm gonna do is measure about my knee, a little bit below my knee and just put an overhand in the line. Okay, so now I'm gonna start ascending. Now before I ascend, just to review one more time the situation and on top, basically I'm on the shelf, my client now is on the focal. I have my two prussics attached with my catastrophe knot as my clove hitch, which I'll be minding as I go up, both attached to my tying points. The client has a very a highly efficient pulley here, and the pulley has a slip hitch on it, which I know is good, and the slip hitch is crossing both strands. I reached around with my right, put it over, under, and then push down, so both strands are engaged. And now it's time for me to go up. Put this basically right on my center bar. And now, this is very important, when I ascend, I'm gonna basically hold, I'm not gonna hold above it, I'm gonna hold below, and I'm gonna stand up, straight up, and I'm gonna, at the same time, slide up my waist and sit back down, okay? And that's the basic process. Lift my foot. I'm gonna repeat the process again. Hold under the foot prussic, and I'm gonna use my thumb a little bit to unengage or unlock the prussic as I go up. You're going to stand straight up and then sit back down, lift up your leg, bring up the prussic, repeat the process again one more time. So I'm going to stand as I stand up, bringing up the prussic as well, sit back down, mind this prussic here. Now notice I have some slack here. Okay, now why is this here? Why are we using this in general? As I said, there have been circumstances where students have grabbed the rope above, in a panic they pull down, and then it unlocks both prussics, and they'll just basically hit the bottom if this clove hitch was not minded. So what I'm going to do now, just to do that, to mine the clove hitch, I'm going to take out some slack out of the clove, and this slack is basically between the prussics and the clove hitch. I'm going to pull that slack out. So that ensures that if I fall down, if I slide down, I'm only going to slide down a short amount before the clove hitch engages. All right, so now this is another really important point. I'm going to edge transition. What I want to make sure first is that I don't have a lot of slack in my clove hitch. So I'm going to take out the slack here because when you come over the edge, worst case scenario is you pull the rope and then you actually would pop the, uh, the slip hitch and then the client would slide down and make the rope very tight, making it harder for you to come over the edge. Um, also, what I can do now is I want to make sure first that I get this foot prussic all the way to the edge and as far as I can. So I'm going to maybe stand up one more time, get this to the edge here, just like that. Okay. Now, I'm going to take my foot out and now watch this. I can just stand up. Okay. I can stand up here and when I stand up, I can pull on the rope here. You see, I'm using my hand 
pulling and I'm sliding that prussic up more, sliding that foot prussic up. Again, standing up more, sliding this prussic up, sliding the foot prussic up. And now I'm basically over the edge. So that was the edge transition there. And now we're gonna go back up and do the rescue. And the last thing to notice is as your edge transitioning, you're gonna make sure that you're still minding your prussics. Still mind both your prussics before you, um, before you get to your personal safety, you wanna mind everything. Okay, so I'm still gonna go now. Hoi I'll see you soon. Tak fitte, as they say here in Iceland. Mind these prussics. I'm gonna put on my personal safety. Edge protection. Lock it. Okay, so now we're up. We've uh, come over the edge, we did an edge transition. So hopefully you got some knowledge and insight with that. So now since my edge protection is on, I can start removing things. I'm gonna take off this clove hitch here because my edge protection is on. It's checked, click checked. That clove hitch is off. I can also take off the prussics off of myself and one of the prussics off the rope. So I'm gonna just undo these. Okay, so I'm gonna take this off. And now I'm gonna take this one off the rope. I'm gonna take the prussic off the rope that does not have the don't forget me knot, okay? So in other words, I'm gonna take the foot prussic off the rope that we used. Okay, that foot prussic is off the rope. And you don't wanna just drop your stuff. If you, if you don't have time to bundle it up, which you don't, just put it in a pocket, right? Just keep your workstation clean. Don't step on your own gear. Right, that's the client's job, not yours. But um, <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna take this off myself now as well, but I'm not gonna take it off the rope, okay? This is gonna be used as my three to one, and we'll talk about that in one moment. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in a mechanical advantage system. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna put this in the shelf, okay, and I'm gonna, put this, uh, it's actually a little pro tip here. You could put the loop, this metal loop toward you and avoids a twist in the line. If you have the ATC guide. So I'm gonna put this loop, kind of like that orientation toward me. I'm gonna now put this rope, the rope that I repelled on, which the, the uh, prusik is still there. I'm gonna put this into the ATC. Okay, now how do we do this? This is a really important thing that can't be overlooked. So the ATC, we have, once again, high friction mode, low friction mode. We have the hand and the climber. Okay, the climber's rope is gonna go on top of the hand. So if you notice here, I'm holding it where the climber's rope is above. I'm gonna put that into the ATC in that exact orientation. Okay, now if we look at it one more time, we can see the climber's rope is on top of the rope that's going into the high friction teeth here. Okay, so now, I'm gonna close that up. Okay, so at this point, we have um, this, this figure eight here. But before we, we can take this off now because we wanna use this carabiner um, here for the three to one. But before we take it off, you wanna check and make sure if I pull, if the client's weight pulls, what's gonna happen? And if I pull slack, what's going to happen? If you feel confident with that, then we're good to go. And of course, you click check your carabiners I click check this carabiner here, we're good. This carabiner is checked. So now I'm gonna take this off the system. Okay. And now what's valuable to do is sometimes the slip hitch can be a little finicky. So you wanna make sure, I'm gonna to go to the edge. I'm just gonna drop that actually. I'm gonna to go to the edge. And I'm gonna be assessing and taking care when that slip hitch is gonna pop. Because right before it pops, I wanna give it a yank. Because sometimes it gets pigtail, meaning it twists and it doesn't pop. So we're gonna make sure that we pop it properly. Okay, I'm gonna take this. So now I feel it getting tighter. So what I can do now, Okay, and now it's gonna give it a nice, nice firm. 
there we go. So it just popped. I'm just gonna go, go and assess, make sure that it did pop. While I'm doing that, I can also bring my Prusik with me. And it looks like it did pop. So now it's just time to haul. This is the most fun part of the rescue here. So what I recommend is there's a way to haul where I'm gonna take the rope, I'm gonna twist my hand, I'm gonna pull, come forward, pull, come forward, pull, and using, I'm using my body, I'm using my legs as well. Could go back a little bit as well. Again, reset. Just check on the clients. They're doing well. But let's say, hypothetically, this is just gets too hard for you, you can't do it. What are the options you have? A clove hitch on to my personal safety carabiner without taking it off, of course. And I'm doing this not close to the edge, far enough away from the edge that if I did trip, I'll be going this way. Okay, now the clove hitch is on. Now I can just walk back. So this is another simple way to do it. You can walk all the way back, of course, off of frame here. Or another option is you can just kind of do this. You can put it between your legs. There are many options to make it easier on your hands. Okay, now, the client's coming to the edge. Now, when they come to the edge, I want you to notice what's happening. Do you see how this rope is slack now? Okay, that's the kind of something you really have to mind. You have to be careful and keep that brake strand or the strand where the hand would be. Make sure that's nice and tight. So sometimes when you pull up, you want to also pull this brake strand so it tightens the climber rope. Okay. Now I'm going to show you another little trick when it gets close to the edge. So now we have three options. What we can do is we want to go to the edge. We want to go to the edge with the client because if you're in a situation where there's snow, what could happen is the client could get caught against the cornice, meaning he's blocked. If you keep pulling, you can break his back. So we want to make sure that he's free of areas, free of debris. Also, you're not pulling him onto something weird or he's not kind of curled up in an odd way that could injure him more. So the one option is I can just come to the edge and do really small micro pulls here, really small pulls and just keep resetting. That's one option. The second option is I could take this out. Now notice I'm taking a carabiner out on the three to one, a non-essential carabiner. So if I take this out, nothing's going to happen because this is my brake strand coming nice and clean from my anchor as you can see. I can just put this on the client. Now notice also my personal safety is of course still attached. So I can put this on the client, right? And then I can pull them on the, pull them over the edge on a two to one. That's another option, right? So that's number two. Number three, what I would do is I would come up here and I would put a catastrophe knot basically right behind the ATC. And this is just in case, because the ATC is not a hands-free device. So this is the other option. This is probably the easiest, just doing a two to one over the edge. And now, of course, he's coming over. From this point, I may grab, grab by the loop here. I want to bring them three meters from the edge. in a nice safe spot, success.